Hi, this is Zen from Gadget Gaming Fix and I'm here to bring you an overview of the rig I'm using to edit and process videos. Many people have this belief that media desktops need to be these massive full towers with i7s and 32 gigs of RAM. Well here's a PC that defies all that. We'll start from the outside. My rig is housed in an NZXT Source 210 ATX case, meaning it supports a full-size ATX motherboard. It comes in a few colors including the blue, black, white, and the orange you see here. Now something unique about NZXT's design is that they like weird angles and shapes, and this obsession with geometry continues in all their cases. It is said to be their iconic feature. Around the front, you'll find a USB 3 port, USB 2 port, mic jack and audio jack, and that's about it for the front panel connectors. But for $69, you really can't complain. There's three optical bays and a circular power and reset switch. Moving to the side, you'll find a large untinted window to show off your fancy hardware. At the back, you'll find an included 120mm fan, holes for water cooling tubes that are sealed by default and don't come with rubber grommets, rear I.O., 7 PCI Express slots as well as a bottom mounted power supply. Moving to the other side, there is a large CPU cutout and about 1.5cm of clearance for cabling. The NZXC has 6 fan mounts, two 120s at the front, two 120s or 140s at the top, a 120mm fan mount at the rear, and last but not least, a 120mm fan mount at the bottom of the case. This provides a huge amount of cooling potential for such a small case. Do note that none of these fan mounts have an included dust filter and I had to buy my own dust filters from eBay. Now let's move to the hardware. Starting with the motherboard, I opted for an MSI Z77G45MA, which is an MATX board running the Z77 chipset. This was the cheapest Z77 I could find at the time, and the features it offered made it a no-brainer. I paired it with an Intel Ivy Bridge i5-3550, running at a stock 3.3GHz speed. Moving on to the RAM, I chose a dual-channel kit of 4GB of Corsair Vengeance 1600MHz RAM, making that 8GB in total. At the time, there were only red heat sinks, and it was the cheapest badass RAM running 1600MHz. Moving to the optical slot, I chose an LG DVD writer. The GPU has a power color 7870 Mist. It's somewhere between a 7870 GHz edition and a 7950, and its performance rivals that of the GTX 760 from Nvidia. A power color chose an inadequate solution to cool such a beefy graphics card. It only has a single fan that spins very loudly when under load. Having more case fans helps reduce the GPU's fan speed but does add noise. When playing intensive games, it easily hits 85 degrees under load. Storage is a single 120GB Corsair Force 3 SATA 3 SSD, which I bought for $230. I have two Hitachi 7200 RPM drives which I use to work on and for gaming when high speed is essential. Last but not least, the power supply is a semi-modular Seasonic M12 650W 80 plus bronze power supply. So there you have it, my personal rig for media production. Let us know if you liked the video and whether you'd like to see more of such hardware overviews. You can include suggestions of what you'd like to see and we might be able to get it into the studio. Don't forget to subscribe and like our video to never miss an episode of Gadget Gaming Fix. Once again, I'm Zan and I'll see you in the next episode of Gadget Review.